You can use the techniques that I described in the last video on stacking images of the land to stack images that you've light painted. And this technique is actually even more powerful with light paintings because not only can it help reduce the noise and increase the detail, it can also give you a lot of control over how you want the scene illuminated. And these are shots that I actually took while leading a photo workshop. And I just set my camera up in one spot and let it take repeated exposures because I didn't want to be spending time taking my own photos and wanted to spend time helping the participants. So while my camera was shooting, the participants' flashlights often got in the shot. And as you can see, none of these shots look very good, except maybe this one here. But the lighting was very uneven in all of these different shots. And so obviously, if you're doing your own light painting, you'll be able to do a better job. But I've chosen to use these images just to show you how powerful this technique of stacking images can be, because I really have no right to be able to get a very good shot by stacking these images. Because while this one's well illuminated, you can see there's obviously a ton of glare and there's some people in the background there. And then the rest, I only have the scene partially illuminated. And this one's okay, but I'm actually not going to use this one just to show you how effective this technique can be, even with really six bad images. And so I am going to select all of these images and then right click and go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, now that these are all loaded in Photoshop, I'm going to once again select all of the layers and right click on them and select Convert to Smart Object. And now I can again go to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode. And once again, I can choose Mean or Median. And in this case, these are going to produce rather different results. And so I'll start with Mean. And like I mentioned before, Mean just averages the values of all of the pixels in each of the images. And so it's gotten relatively even lighting over the scene, but you can see there is still all this glare from this image here. And you can, if you zoom in, still see this glare and this light that's also from this picture here. And so now if I want, I can try using the stack mode median. So I'll go to layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Median. Okay, now with Stack Mode set to Median, you can see that all this glare that was there before is mostly gone except for here. And all of this in the background is completely gone. And the reason for this is because Median discards any extreme outliers in any of the images. So since there was only really bright glare in one of these images. It didn't use the pixel values in this image. And there was glare in most of these images right here. And since that glare was present in most of the images, it did still include that glare. And so this, for the most part, has pretty effectively cleaned up the image. But it is problematic because it also discards some really bright areas like this part, since that's an extreme outlier. And so it doesn't include it in the blend. Whereas when I had the stack mode set to me, it included more of the bright areas. And I'll zoom in here just to show you the difference. This is with the stack mode set to median. And then here's with me. You can see this tree has a lot more detail with the stack mode at mean as opposed to median, where it has more noise and it's darker. And so here's where it gets pretty cool. You can combine the best of both worlds and use stacking mode median in parts of the image and stacking mode mean in other parts. And you can do this by 
duplicating this layer, I'll just right click and select duplicate layer. And now with the layer below, I have the stacking mode set to mean. And so on this layer, I'm going to change the stacking mode to median. And so now the top layer has a stack mode at median. The bottom layer has it at mean. And now I'm going to create a mask on this layer. And in this case, rather than hitting this icon, I'll go up to layer, layer mask, and then hide all. And this just creates a completely black mask on this top layer. And so it reveals the bottom layer entirely. And now in this top layer, I'm going to select a paintbrush. And I want to make sure my foreground color here is set to white. And I'll put the opacity up at about 50%. And make sure the hardness is at 0%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over areas where the blend worked better with the median stack mode. And this would be in areas with the glare and the red light on the tree over here. So by simply painting over these areas, I can get that glare to largely disappear. And I don't have to worry about the sky because I'm going to combine a separate image of the sky later as I did in the previous video. And so now I have a better image than either of these stack modes individually could have created. But I can actually do even better here. I can duplicate this layer once again, and I'll go down to the bottom layer that has no mask and select duplicate layer. And now I'll drag this layer up to the top so that it's entirely visible. And I will now change the blending mode to maximum. And maximum basically takes the brightest pixel value from each of the individual images. And so you're going to get the brightest possible image and the most amount of light painting possible on the scene. And so you can see that I now have a very bright image. And because it's using only the brightest pixels, it's basically maximizing the glare and all the trouble areas here. But I can again create a mask and just use the part of this image that I want to use. So I'll again go to layer, layer mask, hide all. Now I still have the foreground color set to white with the paintbrush selected. In this case, I'm going to change the opacity down to about 20%. Now I can start painting in on areas where I want the image to be a little bit brighter. And so I'll start out with some of these background trees. And I'll have to be careful to avoid bringing the glare out again. And I can add a little more light up here. And if I go too far, I can just change the background color to black and undo some of that painting. And now I may want to brighten up this tree just to give more of the focus from the light painting on the tree itself. And I might hit the shadow area a little bit as well. And since I haven't really optimized these images yet, I think I'll go ahead and make a levels adjustment. And just optimize this image a little bit so I can get a better feel for how the adjustments I'm making down here are affecting the image. So I'll go back to this layer and continue painting on it. Again, I don't have to worry about the sky, even if I'm going too far, because I'm going to be blending in a separate sky of just a single exposure. And so that's already looking quite a bit better to me. And I can actually make fourth layer, and I'll again go down to this bottom layer and duplicate it. And then once again, drag it to the top. And this time I'm going to use a fourth stacking mode by going to layer, 
smart objects, stack mode, and this time instead of maximum, I'll use minimum. And as you can guess, minimum uses the darkest pixel from each of the images, so you're going to get a very dark image. In theory, I could have actually just used one of these images here where I didn't do any light painting to begin with, but you get basically the same result with minimum in this situation. And so once again, I'll do layer, layer mask, hide all. And now I'll paint over areas that I want to darken up. And I'll leave the brush settings the same as I had on the previous layer. And now this bright light here, I might want to darken it a little bit. And I might want to go over the glare, try and darken that up. And another way to get rid of glare would be to use the techniques I outlined in the video on eliminating light pollution. You can use the exact same techniques to get rid of glare, since it's basically a discoloration of the image that you want to get rid of. And if I wanted to make any major adjustments on this layer, if I wanted to darken up this area here, I'd actually probably be better off just using a burn dodge layer, because when I do paint over this, I'm also bringing back some of the noise. And by using the burn dodge layer, you'd be keeping this information from the lighter pixels and then just darkening the image and not increasing the noise. But for just reducing a little bit of the bright areas in the image, this is a really fast and simple way to do that. And I might go back to this maximum layer, and it's probably good to rename all these so you remember which, which layer is which. And I might try and paint in a little bit more back here. And so this image is starting to look pretty good and especially good considering that I really have no right to get a decent image out of what was just random flashlights getting in my shot. And so you can imagine if you're actually intentionally trying to light paint the scene, it can be incredibly effective. You could just light paint parts of the scene in each frame you take. You could light paint this part of the scene and then you could even walk back here and light paint these trees in a separate exposure. And the more frames you take and the more lighting you do, the more control you'll have over the image. And you don't have to be overly precise when you're initially taking the images as you can easily adjust it with these layers here. And so I'll quickly make a levels adjustment with a darks luminosity mask. Just to better show you how this image would appear when I get closer to finalizing it. And so next I'll show you how to add the sky into the scene because as you can see, the sky is currently a total mess. And this will be similar to how I showed in the last video, but I'll also add one new way of blending the sky that can be effective in some situations.